Good morning everyone, how's it going? Justin again, as always, thanks for watching my channel, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be working on a 2002 Chevy Silverado. Uh, I went to help out a friend yesterday, my buddy Aaron, up the hill. He had a fuel pressure regulator that he was having difficulty installing, so I went up to help him. It took me all of maybe a minute to do, total between looking at the old one and the new one, what the problem was they were having, and install it. Uh, not really asking why, because it wasn't my business why they were putting one on there at the time. It was just a friend of mine, and he was needing a quick help to get it put back together so it could run. I did, however, pull DTCs, saved the report using the C-Reader 123X, and erased codes, told them that uh, they needed to drive it around, get the drive cycle running, let me know when they put some miles on it so we can go back and check readiness monitors before they do a smog. That being said, his check engine light came back on later that evening. I told him to come on down this morning. So briefly, I'm just gonna cover the six codes that it had prior to me um, leaving and coming back to the house. And we're gonna plug the scan tool in and see what code came back and why. And we're gonna go and dig into it a little bit. So the six DTCs that he had was a P0172 fuel trim system rich bank one, P0175 fuel trim system rich bank two, P0300, our favorite, right? Engine misfire detected. <clears throat> P0327 knock sensor one circuit low frequency, P0332 knock sensor two circuit low frequency, and a P1133HO2 sensor insufficient switching bank one sensor one the other code that he had that he wasn't too concerned about at the time which may be a switch from underneath the seat or seat belt buckle or a squib i'm not sure uh, he didn't want to look into it was a b0090 active switch voltage out of range and that's for his supplement inflatable restraint system so those are the codes that we had yesterday after clearing them, we're going to wait and see what kind of codes that he has today. I'm going to be using the C-Reader 123X to try to troubleshoot this uh, issue that he has. I've also got my fancy Harbor Freight test light. I've got the Klein DVM. I've got some back pin probes because I have a feeling we're going to be probing some things. I've got my magnetic test leads that stretch out about 10 feet. And just in case I cannot uh, bi-directionally control something that I need to, I've also got my Solus Edge. So we're gonna see how far I need to get into this to figure out what the root cause of the problem is. So, hope you guys enjoy, stick around. You'll get a chance to meet Aaron and we'll see what's going on. All right, everybody, meet my friend Aaron. Aaron, say hi to everybody. We're gonna be checking out his truck and see what kind of problem he has. What do you think it's gonna be? Spark plug? Um, Fuel injector? Anyway, one of them. And that these. All right. So yeah, are these are the codes I'll that you had before? It, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have these codes saved actually, so we'll take a look and we'll see which one came up. Let's dig into it. All right, sorry if there's wind noise. I don't have one of those fancy things for the audio. So I got the C Reader 123 hooked up. And it looks like we might have gone back into the security setting. Let's see. Okay. Okay. It's still the, the security thing is stupid. I know. Now, yeah, hold it. Fuck you. not wanting to read it right now because your security is disabling it. Hmm. Device has been connected. It's connected. Come on, man. And this is 2002. Auto ID. Display codes. All powertrain codes. You still have every single one 
of those codes. Too rich, too rich, misfire, knock sensor, knock sensor. Oh boy. All right. Well, it's a multi cylinder misfire detected. So I'm going to take, I'm going to just spitball here if the knock sensors are intermittently shorting that could throw p0300 yeah, I don't own but one. your fuel system's too rich so the answer is why i don't own one my mom put a one on front and they have wire in it can't get it my own air is a motor it was chewed on yeah okay my own was no new right. you don't want it front and not i know all right well let's go to uh what am I gonna do here? Let's go to functional tests. And I don't know we need to do an injector balance test. That could help. Let's go back. Generic functions. Let's go to data. Misfire data. That's what we want. Let's see if we can figure out which cylinder is misfiring. See right now it says misfire cylinder number four, five, and six. That's fine. So four, five, six. Give it a security key. I know. Okay, so now three. Four, five, six. You got misfires in all those cylinders. All right, so taking a look underneath the hood, we're gonna look at some of the coil wires. What oh, yeah, you got going on here? You guys tried to do some wire repair a little while ago. This is for a fuel injector. Yeah, wire, wire hose. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got, that one's all I'm well that could be one. that could be your biggest problem right there is the wiring I don't know okay. at home I can't make and if this one, <laughs> oh my god all right let me look at this side so this side okay nothing really looks like it was messed with too much on this side but this entire side has been rewired. Let's take a look at the plugs. Okay. All right, let's investigate these wires a little bit. Well, we found one of the problems here. Yeah, he doesn't even have. On it, and two wires. Look at yeah, neither. Know. Neither one of them were connected. I bet that's going to be our biggest problem right there. So we're going to have to go through all the wires again. Alright guys, so right now what we're going to do is we're going to re-solder the three or four fuel injectors. The fuel injector wires were connected poorly and as a result, I believe we're causing the misfire. There was at least two or three injectors that weren't connected whatsoever and one that only has one wire going to it. With having that many misfire codes and rich codes, that's where we're going to start. So. And I gotta get more butane. <laughs> but anyways, anytime you guys can, anytime you guys can solder the wire connections, the better off you're gonna be. Uh, I have oversized heat shrink, which sucks, but I'm hoping it'll at least seal it up somewhat. I do have liquid electrical tape, but try to avoid using butt connectors like this for any part that's actually majorly important to your vehicle. In this case, fuel injectors. All right, Aaron, I'm gonna fill this back up, and we're gonna tackle the other wires. All right, so we fixed the wiring. We're hoping for the best. Data display, misfire data. Another freaking. Okay, so still got cylinder number four, two, seven. Oh, there goes three. 
three, four, five, seven. Might have to relearn so if I the counters are going back down here, so let's give it a second. going on with three. There's one. Five is gone. Okay, so let's let's see what we missed for cylinder number one and three, but there's definitely going on with three. Is that a hundred counts right now? Okay. Oh yeah, look at this. Hang on. Look it. Aaron found it. Show him. Look at that. Who says a Haynes manual <laughs> is faster than uh, service information? Here I'm sitting here dicking around trying to find it. He's got it. So rock and roll. Hopefully you guys can see this. That five millivolts. Okay, I got charging there. So let me switch to the ground now. Now we're on ground, and I'm charging on both sides of that, which we shouldn't be. Oh yeah, having all kinds of fun now. So we're gonna do a resistance test going from the injector to the fuse block. It's a 15 amp fuse. I don't have it in front of me, but at any rate, I don't want to go after the computer just yet, so let's see what happens here. I'm suspecting an open between the power distribution and the fuel injector. I kind of dug into the harness a little bit. I haven't seen anything yet. I'm sure it's further in the harness. All right, so. We've got 12.96 ohms of resistance that is a lot let me probe the other side of this circuit point two so maybe I was on the wrong side of the circuit because that would be closer to what I'm looking for all right so now I'm gonna probe the other side come on man now I'm going to probe the other side of the fuel injector connector here. Alright, so here's our ground side. Let's jump back to that other one that we first probed. Ten point three seven mega ohms. Let's go back to the other side. Nothing changing. Ten point two nine. So we're looking at the wrong thing here it's not a feed side issue it's a grounding side issue all right Wendy is a motherfucker we started digging through the harness to try to find it using our continuity beep beep deal got continuity all the way up to here problem is now the injector ground is ground side switched by the computer which means I need to follow this harness down all the way into C2 connector all right so we're down at C2 connector on the PCM I'm getting ready to pull this connector. 
Oh, here we go. I'm on the wrong pin out. Underneath. There it is. I was on the wrong pin. All right, so I'm on direct hit. I'm just gonna show you guys the wiring diagram and in case you missed it in the video of what it was that I was doing. So, took a, taking a look at the uh, misfire monitors that we had going on with the Solus Edge. Uh, we did have a lot of counts going off on fuel injector number three, which is the second one back on the driver's side. That was the one that we were, uh, we first I had them start it, we ran it. I had voltage charging voltage on both sides of the circuit so I had charging voltage here on the power wire I also had charging voltage over here on the other side of the injector which I shouldn't it comes down to the computer and it is ground side switched so if there's an open between this ground and here then that would make sense why I'm getting 14 volts on both sides of the circuit uh, before I condemned it, of course, I did come up here. You can see C10 uh, joins up with D10 going to injector A fuse 15 amp. And we tested that. Of course, I had power on both sides. That makes sense, right, to a lot of you guys out there that are far more diagnostically proficient than me. But that was at the fuse block. Uh, so after we figured out, after we uh, basically did a continuity test from this side of the circuit to the power distribution we were good but from this side of the fuel injector down to the PCM we were good 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 and then we had full continuity between the computer connector C2 at the PCM and the injector itself number three so this leads me to determine that we have a faulty driver issue in the PCM now I'm going to go ahead and refer back to the conversation that I have with Aaron and what I recommend if you run into this situation. All right guys, so we had to dig a little deeper. Uh, it wasn't as easy as just changing uh, or fixing the injector wires that were not connected. Uh, looks like it's a PCM driving issue. Now I would recommend, because I'm still just kind of getting into diagnostics, you take it to a shop, professional shop, and have them verify that that's actually what's going on. Because I don't want to just tell you, hey, yeah, man, it's a PCM for sure, because that's what it looks like to me. That's just my opinion. So you can bring it into my shop if you want later in the week or take it to your shop of preference, but have somebody go back in there and just pay the diagnostic fee. You don't want to end up throwing a, a $1,500 computer at it if I'm incorrect. Now I think I'm correct, but again, I'm smart. I know you don't want to try to wire. I know you not right. So. Right. So and that's and what made me that's kind of. Why the eighty nine became the nine oh eight became white. Right. That's why I was kind of wondering why you guys did change the fuel injector wires. And now that like after we fixed that, you saw how like we still had misfires all over the place for that bank, right? And all all of it was like injector. That's crazy. But alright guys, that's all we got for today's video. Thanks as always for watching our channel. I'm Justin, this is Aaron. We're saying deuces, cheers, have a great weekend.